Today we're going to be talking about using documents with headers and footers in Microsoft Word and getting to know Microsoft Word a little bit. The topics we're going to be discussing in this particular lesson will be defining Microsoft Word parts and the, that will include the title bar, the quick access toolbar, ribbon tabs, the ribbon itself, the document area, status bar, view buttons, the zoom slider, and the insertion point. We're then going to talk a little bit about how to explore the uh, view tab. Specifically we're going to look at about three different views as well as how to turn on and off the ruler. We're going to show you how to turn on the hidden characters and what those particular characters are. That's using the show hide button. We're going to talk about how to type and edit text into a Word document show you how to turn on the headers and footers and how to type information into those footers and then finally how to save your file. For this first exercise we're going to go ahead and start up Microsoft Word. To do this we're going to go to the start button on Microsoft Windows. I'm going to type in Word, W-O-R-D, and I'm finding my Microsoft Office Word 2000 13. So Word 2013 is the program we're opening. Once that file is open, you will see that it says blank document, among other things. These are called templates. We'll talk about templates at a later time. For right now, we're going to go ahead and open up this blank document. What I'd like to do is take a few minutes to take a tour of Microsoft Word and define the different parts of Microsoft Word. All of the Microsoft Office products have what are called a title bar. The title bar appears along the top of the screen here. It currently says document one. Yours might say document two, document three, and then it says, micro, it says Word. This tells you that one document is open, with the Microsoft Word. Once we give this file a name, it'll have the name of the file. To the left of this, you will see what is called the Quick Access Toolbar. This is where I can put various buttons that I want to have quick access to. My toolbar that is here has more buttons than what your toolbar will have. That's because I've been using my program for a while. Underneath the Quick Access Toolbar, you will see the ribbon tab. The ribbon tab has various op options that are available. The home tab is the most common, which we're going to be using several of the items that are here. There's also the insert tab, which has other options. Design, page layout, references, mailings, review, and view. Now, although you see a developer tab on mine, you won't see it on yours. That's because I've got a special feature turned on that displays that particular tab. If you haven't done so, please click with me to the View tab because we're going to be making some changes on the View uh, settings in just a little bit. Underneath the ribbon, you will see the main working area. Um, also known as the document area of Microsoft Word and this is where we spend 90 percent of our focus uh, when we're typing in Microsoft Word. Along the right side of the screen you will see a horizontal scroll bar that allows me to move up or down in the document. If I'm zoomed in really close I might see a horizontal scroll bar at the bottom of the screen as well. Along the very bottom you will see this blue bar this blue bar down here is called the status bar. The status bar will tell you how many pages we're working on. Okay, Coming across you will see various views. These three buttons right here are the three different views that we may switch between. And then you've got a zoom. The zoom allows me to zoom in on my document or zoom out on my document. Okay, My zoom is currently set to 100% which I'm assuming that's what yours is as well. On the View tab, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to turn on the ruler. There's a check mark, Ruler, Grid Lines, Navigation Pane. But right now, turn the ruler on, and that's going to display this ruler at the top of the page. Unchecking it turns the ruler off. 
checking it turns the ruler back on. So if you're asked to work with the ruler, and I keep my ruler on all the time, but if you went to a new computer and you don't see the ruler there, that's how you would get the ruler turned on is by clicking on that ruler checkbox, and that is a part of the View tab. The next thing we want to talk about for just a second is some hidden characters. On the Home tab, if you will, please click with me to the Home tab, and you're going to see several buttons, and before the end of this course, you will know what just about every single one of these buttons do on the Home tab. For right now, we're going to focus in on this button that looks kind of like a backward P. This is the paragraph symbol, and if you hover your mouse over that, you will see that it says Show Hide. This is the Show Hide button, and what it does is it shows the invisible or non-printing characters. So I'd like you to go ahead and press the Show Hide button to turn that on. And what you will see is you will see a paragraph symbol appearing in the document. There are three particular characters that are common that are non-printing characters. One of which is the spacebar. If you press the spacebar, normally the spacebar would not show anything on the screen, but it would move the cursor over. What we just did here is I pressed the spacebar several times, and what you're seeing is a bunch of dots. The dots are representing the spacebar that was pressed. The next key that we may use is the tab key. When you press the tab key, you will see an arrow appearing on the screen if your show hide is on. If I turn the show hide off, it does go away but if the show hide is back on, you can now see that that arrow actually does appear. So if I press the tab key multiple times, I will see multiple arrows appearing on the screen. Next, I can press the Enter key. Every time I press the Enter key, I see one of these paragraph symbols appearing. Those paragraph symbols represent where the Enter key was pressed. So what I'd like you to do now is to go to the second paragraph symbol, click here, and we are going to type some text into our document at this point. We're going to type in the text Microsoft Word 2013 is the word processing program And I'm going to zoom in on this so that you can better see this on the screen as you're trying to type this with me. So I'm going to use my zoom in button right here several times so that you can be able to see the text a little bit larger on the screen. Microsoft Word is the word processing program that comes with the Microsoft Office 2013 Suite, S-U-I-T-E, Suite of Programs. Now notice when we typed in that sentence that we did not press the Enter key, but the words automatically went back to the left side of the screen. This is called Word Wrap. So doing a period and then two spaces, I type in the second sentence. I can use it to create, comma, edit, comma, and format text-based documents such as letters, comma, memos, and reports. Repeating both sentences. Microsoft Word 2013 is the word processing program that comes with the Microsoft Office 2013 suite of programs, period. I can use it to create, comma, edit, comma, and format text-based documents such as letters, memos, and reports. If you need to pause the video at this point to allow for students to catch up, you may do so.
I'd like to take the mouse and click up at the very beginning of the document in front of all those spaces that were typed in. And we're going to type in our name here. We're going to type in, for me it's going to be Scott Miller. That's my full name. Let's talk for a second about what a header is. A header is a something in Word that appears at the top, hence the name header, our, our head is at the top of our body, at the top of every page in the document. So right now I've put my name here and if I were to continue typing a fairly lengthy piece of document here, Eventually, I'm going to go to a new page, and Scott Miller is not going to appear at the top of that page. What I want to do is I want to modify this so that Scott Miller appears at the top of every page. The way we do that is we place a header in our document. We can do that by going up on our ribbon. We're going to go to the Insert tab on the ribbon. Insert. And on the right side is the option for header. We're going to click on Header you will see a series of pre-designed headers which we will talk about at some point in the future but right now we're just going to type in our own header so we're going to come down here to edit header and that puts our cursor in the header area where I can type so I'm going to once again type my name type my name into the header notice that the main part of the document becomes grayed out also notice on the ribbon you have what is called the design tab. This design tab has appeared, it was not there a moment ago, not to be confused with the standard design tab that does appear in Microsoft Word. This is a design tab relating to my headers and footers. This type of tab is called a contextual tab. What that means is this tab will only appear when my cursor is either in the header or in the footer. Once we close out of the header and footer, this tab will go away. So now Scott Miller is going to appear at the top of every page. I want to put something in the footer that is going to appear at the bottom of every page. While we could scroll down to the bottom of the page and click down there, the other way that I can get quickly to the bottom of the page and going into the footer is by using this button on that design contextual tab called Go To Footer. And if I click on that, that will immediately take me to the bottom of the page. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to put in today's date. All right, I'm going to go ahead and type in, I know this isn't the date, but we're going to type in, I'm going to type in on my screen December 1st. 2015. You go ahead and put in whatever today's date is. I'm now done with the footer. I'm also done typing in my header. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of my header and footer. On this design tab there is a button that says close header and footer. That closes me out of the header and footer, puts me back in the regular document. And if I scroll to the bottom or the top of the page, I will see that my headers and footers are appearing. Now I don't need my name to appear twice, so I wish to delete my name out of this top page. There are several ways that you can delete text. My cursor right now is to the right of my name. If I wish to delete the text to the left side of the cursor, I will use that the backspace key on my keyboard. So I'm going to press backspace and every time I press backspace one character disappears. Now another way I can remove text is if my cursor is on the left side of the text. So right now my cursor, I've moved my cursor so that it is in front of the word Scott. If I wish to remove that text, I can use the delete key on the keyboard. So please move your cursor to the beginning of your first name. Then on the keyboard, press the delete key. And you will see that that removes characters to the right of the cursor. So the difference between the backspace key 
is the backspace key removes characters to the left of the cursor. The delete key, however, removes characters to the right of the cursor. As we finish up this particular activity, the last thing we need to do is to save this file. So to save the file, we're going to go ahead and do a file, save as, on the menu, on the ribbon, we go to file, save as. We are going to save this file to our computer, so we're going to click on computer. And we're going to begin by going to our documents folder. So where it says my documents on the right, we're going to click on my documents. Microsoft Word, by default, always saves to our documents folder. Now what I want to do is I want to create a folder with today's date on it. That way, when we upload our work at the end of class today, we'll be able to have a folder with today's date on it. To do this, we're going to have to add a new folder to our documents folder. Up at the top here, you will see an icon that says New Folder. If I click on New Folder, it will create a new folder ready for me to type in a name. And so for this, we're going to go ahead and type in today's date. I'm going to type in August. We're going to say August 20th, and that should be sufficient. When I press the Enter key, that will lock that folder name in place. Now I want to actually save the file into that folder. So I'm going to double click on August 20th and that will now take me into that August 20th folder that is a part of my documents. If you look at the top of your screen here, you will see that you are in my documents and in the August 20th folder. I'm now going to give this file a name. So I'm going to select the file name at the bottom here, and I'm going to type in the name W, W standing for Word, 01, because this is the first lesson, W01, and this is a try activity. So we're going to type in T-R-Y, and then a dash, and what I'd like you to put here are your initials. So I'm going to put in SM at this point, so you would type in whatever your initials would be for this file name. So we've created a file name that says W01Try dash your initials. We're going to put that file in the August 20th folder and we're now going to save that file. Notice on our title bar at the top it now says W01Try dash SM. Also tells me that I'm using Microsoft Word so this file has now been saved. I'm going to close this particular file. On your desktop, I want you to click on the Documents folder right down here, this yellow folder at the bottom, and we're going to click on the Documents Library. The Documents Library. Within that Documents Library, this is my home computer, so you're going to see lots more files here. So I'm going to scroll down until I find my August 20th folder and I double click on August 20th and right here is the file that we saved just a few moments ago. If you double click this file it will reopen again in Word so that you can find that file and if you wanted to edit it again later. I'm going to close this out and that brings us to the end of lesson one. In this lesson, we started up Microsoft Word and we looked at various parts of the Word. We talked about the title bar, the quick access toolbar, the ribbon tabs in the ribbon, the document area. We discussed the status bar at the bottom of the screen, the view buttons, the zoom slider, and the insertion point. We also took a look at how to explore the view tab. We showed you how to turn the ruler on. We also demonstrated the hidden characters and how to show those characters or hide those characters. We typed some text into our document and experimented with editing that text. And then we entered information into a header or footer using the Insert tab. And finally, we showed you how to save a file and place that file into a folder so that you could easily find it at a later time.